Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, valid square. All right, so in this question, we're given the coordinates of four points in a two-dimensional space. Return whether the four points could construct a square. All right, so the coordinate x, comma, y of a point is represented by an integer array with two integers. All right, so how do we know when something is a square? So real quickly, uh, something is a square when all four sides have the same distance between them. And another condition is that between all four of those sides, uh, they are at a 90 degree angle, right? So those are our con uh, conditions. And if you look at this over here, so zero, zero, uh, so let's just imagine zero, zero to be over here in the beginning. Then we would have one, one. So that would be the top right. Then we would have one, zero and zero, one. So that does form a square. If you want, you can just look at it and graph it out. And so in that case, we do return true. Okay, so let's just look at the note over here. So uh, none of these are that important, but this one, a valid square has four equal sides with positive length and four equal uh, angles, which have to be 90 degrees. All right, and input points have no order. So that's pretty important. They are not arranged in any sort of special way. Okay, so now that we know this, let's just kind of uh, look at different conditions and different ways that we can uh, kind of solve this question. All right, so over here, uh, we have this over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an axis, okay, or axes. So we would have a y axis over here and we would have an x axis over here, okay, x and y. All right, so let's just label it. Um, okay, so over here, uh, when you think of a square, at least when the first thing when I thought of as a square was uh, something that looked like this, okay. So this is the first thing that came to my mind and I'm pretty sure this is what you thought as well. Okay, so one thing I do want to say before this, uh, just consider that whatever I am drawing is a perfect square. It does not look perfect by any means, but just imagine or consider it to be a perfect square. All right, so all the uh, the length of all four of the sides are the same and everything is at 90 degree angles, okay? So this over here is a square. Okay, so if you look at this and just imagine every square to just look like this, uh, this question actually becomes kind of simple. So at least what I was thinking of is, the bottom left point over here would have the smallest value. So it would have the smallest x value and the smallest y value. And the top right would have the greatest x and y value. So we can kind of use those conditions and find the distance and all of that and kind of program or make a solution specific to this square. But one thing you want to realize is that not every square looks like this. And, and that's something I did not consider in the very uh, beginning. So for example, what I mean is we could have something which looks like a diamond, right? So something which looks like this. And this over here is also technically a proper square. Uh, so I did not draw it properly. So just imagine that it is a square. I'm really sorry. So this over here is 90 degrees. So everything is 90 degrees and they all have the same length. So in this case, this over here would also be considered a square. So what we did over here is we looked at the bottom left and saw that as the smallest value. So in this case, if you kind of do that, you would actually end up going somewhere over here. So this is the leftmost value. So you can't consider this square over here the same way you would consider this. Okay, so kind of keeping that in mind, we want to be more inclusive for all the different representations we might have for a square. And again, these are not the only two ways you might have them at several different angles and yeah. Okay, so now that you understand that this is not the only way a square is represented, let's kind of come up with a solution. And just for the sake of simplicity, I will only be looking at this over here since I think it's the easiest to follow along with. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by actually labeling these points. So I will give them all a direct value as it is. So in our question, we are going to be given X and Y coordinates and we need to find the distance. But for now, I will just assign it a distance and we will go over how to calculate a distance later. So in this case, let's say it is a square. So let's just say everything has a distance of one. All right, perfect. Now I'm gonna add one more thing, which you may or may not know, depending on how well you remember geometry. So let's just draw a, a diagonal. So between B and D, and we're gonna have a diagonal between A and C. So if you remember the side or the, sorry, the length of a diagonal inside of a square is going to be the length of one of the sides. So let's just call it diagonal. So D stands for diagonal is going to be one of the sides multiplied by square root of two. So this over here gives us the length of the diagonal. Okay. So kind of using that rule, what would the length of this be? So the length of AC would be one multiplied by root two, giving us a length of root two. 
and well BD would also have the same length of root 2. So one thing that we can do over here is we can kind of find all of these uh, dimensions and then compare them. Okay, what exactly do I mean by that? So in this case, uh, let's just try to cover all of the dimensions, okay? And once I cover something, I'll just put a tick mark by it. Okay, so in this case, uh, one thing we want to have is A and B, okay? A and B, uh, so we have this covered, so I'll put a tick mark, and that has a length of 1, so let's just write it down. Uh, similarly, we have B and C, so let's write it down, B and C, and that has a length of 1. Uh, okay, before that, let's just cover everything for A. Then we also have A and D, so A and D also has a length of 1, and finally, we have A and C, okay? And that has a length of root 2, 1 into root 2. Okay, uh, now let's go through the other conditions. So we have B and C and B and D. We already took B and C, so now let's take B and D. And B and D is going to be root 2. And now the only thing that we want to consider, let me just actually do the tick mark. So we have B, C, we have C, D, we have A, C. So we have A, C over here, and we also have B, D. Now the only thing that we don't have is actually C, D. So let's just add that up real quickly. And we also have A, D, sorry. All right, so let's add C, D, and C, D is going to be 1. All right, so what actually can you notice over here? So we know that this over here is a square, but what exactly do you notice? So first, let's just identify what the side values are, right? So by that, I mean A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, D. So I'll just kind of put a tick mark uh, by it. Okay, so these three values over here are the side values. And the other two values, A, C, and B, D, are the diagonals, okay? But how exactly do we differentiate from this? So what I exactly mean by this is, uh, as the question says, we do not know the order of uh, in which we are given the points. So how exactly do we get these values and know exactly which distance refers to what? So to do that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to end up sorting this. So when you sort this, uh, let's just see what happens. So when you sort, you get 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so when you sort this, uh, I actually, I'll kind of generalize it. So we would have four values, okay? So one, two, three, and four. So these four values in the beginning are going to refer to each of our sides. And technically, if we had a square, all of these four values would have the same value, okay? So in this case, uh, let's just uh, do that. So in this case, they would all be one. So one, 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 and one. Okay, now how do we know for a fact that the first four value is, values are going to refer to the sides? And the reason we actually know that is because uh, the sides are always going to be smaller than the, than the diagonals. And if that doesn't make sense, it's because the diagonal is you're taking the side and you're multiplying it with root 2, right? So you're increasing its value. So all four of these refer to the sides. And if that is not the case, we already directly know that it's not a square. So for it to be a square, the first four values must be equal to each other. And one other small condition that we want to take care of is what if we have a point, like just a simple point. So in that case, they would also all have the same S values, uh, but they would have a value of zero since the distance is zero. So in that case, actually, we're going to end up returning false because a point is not considered a square. Okay, so now we have the first four values and now let's look at the other two. So now we would have two other values and both of these, like I said, are going to refer to the diagonals. Okay, so perfect, we have our diagonals, which are, well, in this case, root two and root two. So what exactly is the condition for our diagonals? So the last two values are also going to be equal to each other. So this and this are both going to be equal to each other in a square. And another thing we could do is just because they're equal to each other does not exactly mean that it's a square. We want to see whether this uh, these two are equal to each other and they also are the actual diagonals of our square. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these values, right? So any of the sides. So let's just say we end up taking this and let's calculate the diagonal using that. So in this case, we're going to do one into root two, which gives us root two. And we're going to compare that with these values. And if they are equal to the same thing, that means that we've got a square. So hopefully by now you understood how we can actually come up with finding out whether something is a square or not. So that over there is kind of the first part. And now the other part that you might be thinking about is how exactly do we get these distance values? Because in our question, we're the only thing we're getting are the coordinates, which are x, comma, y inside of a list. So now we want to understand how can we actually get these distance values, all of these over here, so four sides plus two diagonals, 
using this. Let's just take a quick look at how we can do that. Okay, so how exactly do we get the four points that we were talking about? So now in this case, we actually want to be a little bit more inclusive. What I mean by that is I want you to think about the other possible square representations that we can have, like how I showed you the, the diamond form or the same square tilted at a different angle. So not all the squares look like this. So kind of keeping that in mind, we want to actually find out all of the possible directions that we can find between these points. So what exactly does that mean? What I mean by that is let's just kind of assume a value for each of them. So I mean letters. So let's just say A, B, C, and D. So by the ending of this, we want to get the four directions, the four sides. So A, B, B, C, C, D, and A, D. And we also want to get two diagonals. So no matter in what order our points are given to us, it doesn't actually matter to us in order to find our direction. Because all we're going to end up doing is we're going to find out the direction in all the six possibilities. Because over here, there are really only six possibilities. So if you don't want to think, them, uh, think of these values as A, B, and C, and D, think of this as the first point, second point, third point, and fourth point irrespective of at which order we are in, we're going to make sure that we find the distance between each and every point. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So over here, we're going to find the, the distance between A and B. And just to kind of clarify, the distance between A and B is going to be the same as, distance, as the distance between B and A. And keeping that in mind, that really means that we just need to kind of find the distance just one time. All right, so now that we know this, uh, how do we find the distance? So the formula that we're going to be using is the distance is going to be equal to the square root and it's going to be the square root of what? So it's going to be the square root between the change in the x value squared plus the change in the y value squared, okay? So this over here is the formula that we're using and we're just going to modify it a bit uh, as you will see. Okay, so let's just see how we can do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the distance between a and b. So to do that, that's going to give us the change in x is uh, 0 and the change in y is 2. So in that case, we're going to get 0 squared plus 2 squared, which is actually 4 and square root of 4 is equal to 2. So I'm not actually going to do this for each and every point. So just try to kind of do this for each of the points and you're going to end up with 2 on all of our sides. Now for the diagonals, you're going to end up with a value which is actually going to be, uh, let's take a look. So uh, 0, 0, and 2, 2, okay? So now if you are doing a diagonal, the change in x is 2, so 2 squared plus, and the change in y is also 2. So 2 squared, and we're going to square root all of that. And this over here is going to give us a value of square root of 8. And another way to write that is going to be the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 2, which is nothing else but 2 multiplied by square root of 2. Okay. Now this over here does make sense because I showed you earlier that uh, to get a length of a diagonal, you take one of the sides and multiply that with root two. So that is nothing else but doing two multiplied by root two. But dealing with the square root of two might uh, be a little bit confusing, right? Because this is a, a irrational number, right? Square root of two is an irrational number. So what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna kind of get rid of the square root of two. And the way we're gonna do that is by squaring this. So uh, let's just go back a step and we have root 8. So a simple thing we can just do is we can just take the square root of that and now we just get the number 8, right? So we're going to get 8 as our distance, but that actually doesn't make sense, right? Because the diagonal is supposed to be equal to the side multiplied by root 2. So if we want to go with this definition, we also need to change the distance formula that we end up using. So keeping that in mind, all we need to do now is we're going to square this, okay? So when you square the square root, the square root is just going to get uh, get out, right? So the square root is nothing else but to the power of 1 by 2. So 1 by 2 multiplied by 2 gives us a value of 1. So we're taking this to the power of 1. So now in other words, the distance formula we're using now is the change in x squared plus the change in y squared. So now let's just change up all of our values. So let's just take an example, right? So we have 0, 0 and 0, 2. So over here, we have a change of x is 0 and change of y is 2. So now we get 0 squared plus 2 squared, which is 4, and that is going to be the new distance for our length, okay? So I'll just update everything with that. So now we have 4 on all of the four sides, okay? Now, when we find the distance between A and C or B and D, we're going to get a value of 8, okay? 
And the reason we get eight is we would actually get root eight, right? If you were following this formula. And all we're doing is we're squaring that, right? So we actually now end up with eight. And how does this make more sense? So this makes more sense because we can just directly do four multiplied by two and that should equal to eight, and it does. And that means that we have a valid rectangle. And just to kind of show you that, um, we would have the four sides, right? So we'd have four comma four comma four comma four. So this means that we have all the four sides, they're all the same and they're not equal to zero. So the sides are the same distance. Now we wanna check the diagonals, right? And checking the diagonals also helps us with checking if everything is 90 degrees. So for the diagonals, we would have eight and eight. So both of these values are the same. So that's one thing that we're checking for. And the other thing we're checking for is, is one of the sides multiplied by two equal to this value over here? And it is four multiplied by two is equal to eight. So hopefully you understand what we're doing. And uh, I think I went quite in depth uh, in this. So all I'm going to do is directly show you the code because the code really is the easy part once you understand kind of the math or logic behind it. Okay, so this over here is our code and let's just go through it real quickly. So let's start off by defining a function called dist. And this function over here is gonna help us get the distance given to certain points. And the two points that we're referring to are going to be A and B. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the change in X, right? So the change in X, we're gonna go to A zero. So that gives us the X value for A and B zero giving us the X value of B. And again, the order of this doesn't matter because we're ending up squaring them. So even if it's negative, it's going to end up becoming positive after squaring it. And then we're gonna square the value. We're gonna do the same for the Y values and then we're gonna add it up. Okay, so now we're gonna have a list called distances. And inside of this list, we're gonna find the distance between all the six possibilities, okay? So over here, we have the distance between point one and point two. Then we have point one and point three and point one and point four, okay? So over there, we got three of them. And then really all we're doing is we're finding the distance between, between each of these four points. Then we have P2 and P3, P2, P4, and P3 and P4, okay? So now we have all of this inside of our distances. And now what we wanna do is, like I said earlier, is we wanna sort them so that the first four are, are the sides and the last two refer to the diagonal values, okay? So to do that, we're just doing distances.sort. It happens in place. And finally, we're going to end up returning this. So we're gonna check if distance is zero is equal to distances one, two, and three. So basically, we're checking if the first four values are the same. And we're also going to check if this value over here is greater than zero, right? So it has to be greater than zero. If it's equal to zero, that means we have a point. Okay, so uh, in that case, we're going to return true. But we also wanna check for the other condition, which is the diagonals. So we're gonna check if four and five, so in other words, the very last two values, uh, you, if that doesn't make sense, you could just refer to them as negative one and negative two, the last two values. So if they two, if both of them are equal to the same thing, we're also gonna check if we can reach that value. So to do that, we're gonna do two multiplied by distances zero, or in this case, you could actually do zero, one, two, or three. You could do any of them because they all represent each of the sides, okay? So let's just stick with one, it doesn't matter. So two into distance is one, and we're gonna check if that is equal to the other value. All right, so finally, we're just going to end up submitting this and let's see what happens. Okay, and as you can see, our submission was accepted. So finally, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I think the video was pretty long, but yeah, hopefully you did understand. Do let me know if you have any questions and thank you.